I can now say, ladies and gentlemen, that we have truly and finally ushered in a new era. Not just in WWE, but in professional wrestling in general. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. There are no words to describe WrestleMania. Both nights, truly historic. Normally, I would do... <clears throat> A full in-depth review for you know in, in in tomorrow's episode of WWE's biggest issue, but I'm gonna be do, doing something a little bit different from from here on out, as I'm gonna be doing a full review plus the results of each PLE from here on out in one video. So let's just get straight into it. You already know how how my review videos go. <clears throat> Let's get straight into it. Kicking these off with night one of WrestleMania. Rhea Ripley defended the women's world title against the man Becky Lynch. This was a match that Becky Lynch that Becky Lynch needed to win, but it was a match that Rhea Ripley could not afford to lose. Um, first off, big shout out to Motionless and White for actually performing uh, Rhea's song to you know for for her interest, which is awesome, incredible. Um, Honestly, all I can say is, th is that this was ex this lived up to to all the hype. This was exactly this was everything that we knew was going to happen. We knew that that Becky Lynch had a massive chip on on her shoulder, as did as did Rhea Ripley. But honestly, honestly, I think Becky Lynch Becky Lynch was just too was, was just way in in her head, if you will, to try to take the women the women's world title off of Rhea Ripley. So unfortunately Rhea Ripley was able to silence the man with with a riptide to retain the women's world title. Big shout out <clears throat> Big shout out to that matchup. Four stars easy. It there's really no other like conceivable way for the match to have ended. I think the way that match ended was exactly what the fans were expecting. They, they were expecting, excuse me, they were expecting Rhea Ripley to come out to show up as not as the underdog, but more as the as the megastar, I guess, if you will. Um, no offense to LA Knight, but you guys get the idea. But again, congrats to Rhea Ripley. Next up, we have. The six-pack ladder match for the Undisputed Tag Team titles. And yes, the rumors were indeed true. Michael Cole, what Michael Cole said on Raw last week was indeed a fact. The match would continue until both titles were, <clears throat> were retrieved by at least one team. Meaning, whoever won the SmackDown Tag Titles, the rest of the teams would have a chance to go after the Raw Tag Team Titles. And the teams were obviously... Finn Balor and Damian Priest of, of the Judgment Day, DIY, Miz and R-Truth, The New Day, A-Town Down Under, and of course, The New Catch Republic. You guys all already know, when it comes to ladder matches, chaos ensues all over the place. <clears throat> you guys already know, know what's up. Bodies get got, got screwed all over the place. Ladders were broken. Chairs were broken. Or, or, or sorry, no. Tables were broken. Ladders were broken. It was just pure bedlam. However, A Town Down Under was able to secure the SmackDown Tag Team Titles, and then of course, and then of course too. Just when you thought that the Judgment Day had the Raw Tag Titles in their in their grasp, our Truth was able was able to secure them. Thus, he finally got his WrestleMania moment after so many years. Obviously, he had been a part of of, of the WWE since 2008, but going back to 2000. To 2000 to, to you know 2001 when he was known as K Quick, so he does you know he has been a part of WWE before. But honestly, honestly, this match could have gone either way. But this this was an easy five stars. I feel like <clears throat> I feel like when you look at ladder matches and, and just like matches in like you know like ladder matches and TLC matches and whatnot, they're always they're always they're always gonna be five five star matches, you know. And honestly, honestly. It could have gone either way. I feel like I, I I feel like New Day could have went after the SmackDown tag titles and they would have ended up having to go to SmackDown. But I'm but honestly, 
A Town Down Under being a part of SmackDown, going after the SmackDown tag titles, and Austin Truth going, you know, being on Raw, going after the Raw tag titles, I think was probably the smart thing because if they had done, you know, a Raw team going after, going going after the blue titles and you know and vice you know and vice versa, there would have been a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of confusion, and I believe, in in my opinion, I feel like Pierce and Aldis would have had to switch contracts. That's just how I see it, but. Five stars for this matchup, easy. Again, again, when it comes to ladder matches, anything is possible. But we now move into a tag match that was based on hatred and jealousy. Santos Escobar of Legado del Fantasma. And of course, since we're on the topic of Judgment Day, Dominic Mysterio against Rey Mysterio and Andrade. I never would have imagined those two being, you know, being, you know, being a team. Yes, I did. Yes, in my prediction video, I did say it would be, <clears throat> it would be Dragon Lee. But because that Dragon Lee was taken out, Andrade stepped up. And honestly, I'm not even gonna say say a whole lot except the fact that Joaquin Wilde did his his uh, springboard high flying move that he had done in in NXT in the past. Huge, huge WrestleMania moment there. Vega had her moment as well, hitting. Hitting hitting Electro Lopez with a moonsaw, it was just pure bedlam. But of course, in the end, Rey Mysterio <clears throat> was able to hit a double six one nine onto both Escobar and and his own son. Andrade hit 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 Dom with what with what he calls with the move that he calls the message, and of course a frog splash to Santos Escobar picking up the victory. Honestly, honestly though, um, uh, in. <laughs> In in my opinion, the odds were definitely stacked against Legado del, del Fantasma just because of the fact that they had they they had at least one more man in 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 the group. And not only that, but it also took as well as well Philadelphia Eagle football players Lane, Lane Johnson and and Jason Kelsey. So think about that. They also got got involved and they were the reason why why Ray and Andrade were able to pick up pick up the victory. Although I will admit this was a bit of a I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say lackluster, but it was more of a <clears throat> more of a match that you would normally see at a PLE like Backlash or or or, or something like that. Or like perhaps like um uh like uh Fastlane or something. So I'm I'm gonna be optimistic and and, and give and give give this one three stars. Could it have, have en ended differently? I feel like if the judgment day did get involved then yeah, maybe Santos and Dom could have won, but obviously Rhea had had you know had just finished up her her you know her match with Becky, <clears throat> you know you know J you know you know J D Balor and Priest had their bullshit to deal with, so it is what it is. But now we move into Uso versus Uso, Jay versus Jimmy, Team Yeet versus Team No Yeet, and uh, I'm not even gonna say anything. I I feel like. Uh, I feel like some people were were disappointed with, with with this match. Me, honestly, I was happy. I was happy with it. I was happy with with how end with how it ended. It was a way for Jay to finally put the past behind him and move forward with, with himself as, as a singles competitor. So for him to to be able to defeat his own twin with not only not only with the spear but also within with their patented Uso splash. <clears throat> Definitely a very well deserved mat of uh, uh, W in my opinion. So four star. Um, I'm gonna give this one three stars. Um, I feel like I don't really think Jimmy had had, had a chance. I know that. Um, I know that Solo could have gotten involved, but I guess I, I I guess because that that this was a twin thing. It is what it is. But shout out, shout outs to main event Jey Uso finally putting the past behind him. Maybe now he can finally focus on getting going after singles gold in the foreseeable future. But next up, we have we have a six woman tag match between between Damage Controls, Dakota Kai, and the Kabuki Warriors against the team of Naomi, Jade Cargill, and of course Bianca Belair. This was history for 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 Bianca Belair's team. Obviously, you know, you know, all three women having a huge impact on every single like little boy and little girl out there who wanna, you know, who are you know, who wanna make an impact, if you will. And that's what those three women did. And this was 
something that I knew was going to happen. This was something that Damage Control needed to win, but it was also some, something that Bianca's team could not afford to lose. Honestly, honestly, it's, it is, it is what it is. Um, Jade, Jade Cargo w was able to pin, <clears throat> pin Dakota Kai with a, with a patented Beth Phoenix like glam slam to win, to win the matchup. Her first, her first, her first WrestleMania ever. Naomi's first WrestleMania, I believe in two years, in, in two years. Last time she was a part of, part of, part of Mania, she actually became a, became tag team champion alongside Sasha Banks, who now is no, no longer with WWE, unfortunately, but, but still definitely well, well deserved, which makes Bianca's record at, May, at, at WrestleMania 4-0. Um, given, given the fact that, that the Kabuki Warriors are still new to damage control, there was really no way, no way the damage control was, was, was going to win. So I kind of, I kind of expected it, but, but, but honestly, three stars, definitely, definitely well, well deserved for Jade, for Naomi and for Bianca, but knowing damage control it is far from done and there's no telling what, what can happen next. But next up, we have a match that would determine the fate of the intercontinental title between Gunther and Sami Zayn. Do I even have to say anything else except holy shit? This was uh this was one for for the ages to say to 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 say the very least. Sami Zayn had a hell of a match and after get this, 666 days, Gunther was able to, actually lost. He lost the title. But it wouldn't be but again, but think about this. The last time he had he held a title and became a dominant champion and held it for su for for such a long period of time. It was the NXT UK title, and he dropped it to Ilya Dragunov. This time, 666 days against Sami Zayn. Sami picked up the victory with a brain buster onto the turnbuckle and a haluva kick. Two of them to win it. Big big congrats to Sami Zayn, now a four time champion. Um. I think Gunther's reign will definitely go down in history as 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 one of the greatest ever, hands down. Um, definitely Hall of Fame worthy, but obviously Gunther's career on on the main on the main roster is still young, so there is a lot for for him for him to do. But for Sammy, this journey is just beginning. Five stars. I'm not even gonna just five stars easy. Obviously, yes, yes, Gunther could have won. But Sami Zayn needed this win, so props to Sami. Five stars, easy. But then we move into the main event of night one, which was the biggest tag match of all time. Rock and Roman, Cody and Seth. Think about this. 45 minutes was, was how long this match was. Not, I'm not going to say anything else. That's how long it was. And it was either going to be Bloodline Rules or Bloodline Free. Seth chose to team with Cody because of the reason, because of the fact that the Bloodline had dominated WWE for four years. Four years. Four years. And unfortunately, it was all for not. Seth's knee and his back gave out. And of course, because that The Rock was the head of head of the board in TKO, he basically made made, made the match, n match no DQ, and it took a spear plus a rock bottom and a people's elbow onto Cody Rhodes for the match to, to conclude. Thus, the bloodline won, and it would become bloodline rules. But did Cody Rhodes win? Or is the reign of the bloodline continuing? You guys are about to find out right now because we move into night two. And before we do get, get into night two, the main event of night one, five stars easy. Instant classic. Never done. I never saw any, anything like it. Obviously, yes, Cody and Seth could could have won, but to be quite honest, I feel like if I feel like if that were to have been to to have been the case, then Cody probably probably would have lost in on on night two. But did he really? You're about to find out right now as we move into night two. Seth Rollins defended the World Heavyweight Title against Drew McIntyre. And I want to think, and just th think about this. Top of the bell, Claymore to Rollins. Rollins kicks out. This was back and forth. This wasn't even this wasn't even thirty minutes. It was about twenty five minutes at best. And it took Drew McIntyre six Claymores 
to defeat Seth Rollins and finally become world champion in front of live fans. But because that CM Punk was on commentary, Punk got himself a little bit of flesh on Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest cashed in money in the bank. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, and now Damian, Damian Priest is the world heavyweight champion. Champion, Congrats to him. Um... Honestly, given given the fact that Punk was what was on commentary, and given the fact that Rollins was hurt from what happened last night on on at WrestleMania, there was no conceivable conceivable way Priest had that sh that 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 was a shot, and he took it, and he captured gold. No, there was no other way. Four stars, easy. Not much else to say. Next up, we have a we have the Philadelphia street fight between the Pride and, of course, the Final Testament. Bubba Ray Dudley, WWE Hall of Famer, was the guest referee. Snoop Dogg, another fellow Hall of Famer, Famer was on commentary. Obviously, the final the final te Final Testament basically they basically had the match the first like three quarters of the match. But the last quarter, Bubba Ray Dudley got, got involved because, well, Karrion Cross has decided to be a, be a jackass. And um, it took a frog splash onto the table to Karrion Cross for Bobby Lashley to pin Karrion Cross. And thus, the final testament was silenced by the pride. There's no telling what, what can happen next, but I can guarantee you, knowing Cross, it's far from done. Five stars easy. Obviously, if Bubba Ray wasn't the guest referee, Cross and the Cross and AOP definitely de definitely could have won. But that's just my opinion. Next up, Ellie Knight, AJ Styles, <clears throat> a rivalry that goes back months. Excuse me, dating back to when AJ Styles was taken out with an injury at the hands of 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 the Bloodline. And I think, I think, I mean, the, the rest is history. Obviously, AJ Styles targeted LA Knight's knee, and it was just pure chaos all over the place. But in the end, LA Knight hit Styles with, with the BFT to win. Honestly, I'm going to give, give, give this one three stars. AJ Styles was just way in over his head. He was just red. He was just too much, mu too, too, too much of a hot head. I'm just going to say it. Too much of, of a hothead. There's no telling what what AJ Styles will do next, but I can guarantee you that this rivalry is definitely far from done. But I feel like if AJ Styles wasn't wasn't too wasn't that much of a hothead, AJ Styles definitely would would have won. But LA Knight won. Pop, prop, props to him. Next up, we've got. The triple threat for the United States title, Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. All, all I can say is KO and Randy, they had their they they had one goal in mind, kick Logan Paul's ass, and it was all over the place, but it was the it was the final moment that made all the difference. We would think you we would have thought that KSI would have gotten involved, but instead it was I show speed. If you guys know, if, if you guys do not know, just like Logan Paul and KSI, excuse me, I I show speed is also a social media icon. Actually, if I remember correctly, he's actually one of the youngest social media icons on social media, and uh, he took an R, he took an RKO for for his trouble. But in the end, in the end, Randy Orton did hit Ke Kevin Owens. With an RKO, Logan Paul threw him out of the ring and pinned Kevin Owens with a frog with a frog splash to retain the United States title. Not gonna say an anything because obviously Lo Logan Paul was gonna end up retaining anyway with some outside help. But given the fact that it was it was it was under triple threat rules, no count out, no DQ, I can't say that I'm that I'm surprised. But I will give this one three stars. Shout outs to Logan Paul. There's no really no telling who will take the challenge next, but only time will tell. Next up, the co-main event, Bailey EO Sky, former damage control members for the women's title. We thought we I'm I'm gonna be honest. We thought 
that e that damage control was gonna get involved. Surprisingly enough, they didn't. It was purely one on one, and they and both women left it left it all in the ring. Obviously, Bailey's knee became a huge factor, but for Bailey, it was all it, it was all or nothing as she hit a Macho Man elbow onto Io Sky and hit Rose hit the Rose Plant to finally get her WrestleMania moment and win the WWE Women's Title. That was in that's an easy five stars and 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 an instant classic. Obviously, Io Sky, she was a very dominant champion. I will I will get, give her that, but I will say this. Bailey is going to have one hell of a run as women's champion and who knows? Who knows? Maybe this this new version of Bailey might it th this new version of Bailey, I can guarantee you will be very interesting to say the very least. But now we move into the main event and I'm going to be honest, this one was going to, this match would change the complexion of WWE forever. Cody Roman Part 2. This time, because of last night, Bloodline rules. Obviously, the first half of, of the match, just it was just those two one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, they they went into the into the WWE universe, went back in, into the ring. Kendo sticks were, were involved. The announce table was involved. The steel steps were involved. And of course, we knew that it was going to be bloodline rules and we knew the bloodline was going to get involved and that's exactly what happened in the second half of in literally the second half of the match J Jimmy Uso comes in hits Cody with, with with a super kick Jay comes out spears him spears Jimmy through literally on from the stage onto a table and then Solo comes in Spike and Spear combo that they that both Roman and Solo have used countless times in, in the past, and a kick out from Cody. We see the return of John Cena. We hadn't seen him since Crown Jewel. We hadn't seen him since Crown Jewel. Hits Solo with an attitude adjustment, and then on, onto the announce table, and then Rock comes in, hits Cena with the rock bottom, and then you heard the gong. You heard the gong again. Undertaker comes back, hits Rock with a choke slam, leaves. He leaves, and it was it was it was just pure bedlam, chaos all over the place. And think about this: one thousand three hundred and sixteen days, and it took three crossroads for it all to finally come to an end after four almost four years. The reign of the bloodline is over. Cody Rhodes is now the undisputed universal champion. I mean, again, I mean, to be fair, this is Roman Reigns we're, we're talking about here. This is Roman Reigns we are talking about here. Reigns could, could, could you know, could have won if more, if other members of the Honor White family got involved. But this was obviously destiny, and of course, yes, I got a little, um, I got, I got a little, um, um, a little emotional. Had some tears come coming off my eyes for a bit. All I can say is, holy shit! Um, first off, great to see the Undertaker. Oh, and also, let's also not forget, we even saw Seth Rollins come back, but 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 literally sporting the Shield gear. And and even Roman Reigns took Rollins out with 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 the steel chair. It was just pure bedlam. So congrats to Cody Rhodes for finally doing it, becoming the first Rhodes in the family to become WWE champion. And Roman Reigns even also said in his in his documentary this past week that if that 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 if he lost to Cody, he was gone. He was out of WWE. But is he really? Get guess what? We'll, we'll have to find out. But now the question becomes. What's next for the bloodline? Who gives a fuck? I don't think anybody is right now is going to give a fuck about the about the bloodline because now the Triple H era has officially started. Cody Rhodes is champion. This was a, a chaotic matchup. Five stars easy. Not even going to say a word. Honestly, overall, 
this was probably by far one of the greatest WrestleManias, WrestleManias we've had in years. You want to you you want to look at last year's WrestleMania when it was here in LA? This year, holy shit. All I can say is it's about fucking time. The bloodline, the era of the reign, the era of the bloodline is over. And now there's no telling what can happen next. There's no telling what's what will be next for for Solo, for Jimmy, or for Heyman. Only time will tell, but congrats to Cody Rhodes. All I can say is let the Triple H era finally begin. And with that being said, guys, <clears throat> overall, the card itself, beyond five stars. I'm giving it ten stars. Absolutely insane. And with that being said, guys, that will do it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys want more premium live event predictions and results in the future, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and follow me on all of my social media. My ads will be in the description below, as will the info to my fan mail. It will also be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.